Hello everyone and welcome to re-entry. In this video we will take a brief look at how to operate and read the onboard periscope of the Mercury spacecraft. So if we step into the cockpit you will be able to see that you have a window that you can look out and it has a couple of markings around it. And these are all visual marks that you can use to figure out your attitude. And the periscope is located uh, down below on the lower part of the panels. And it basically looks like this. It has a, a, a plate around it that allows you to see uh, your degrees uh, in drift. So you can rotate this uh, marking and you will be able to use these to kind of figure out your ground track. And we'll take a look at that pretty soon. Uh, it has an altitude indicator, uh, which you can use to figure out your current altitude. Uh, it has a filter that allows you to either block all the light that comes in through it. Uh, it has a green, uh, red and a normal filter. And then it has a magnification, so you can uh, zoom in uh, or zoom out, depending on what uh, you want to do. And then it has a retract light that allows you to retract the scope manually. Uh, to retract the scope manually, uh, you can switch uh, the retract scope to manual. And then uh, you have this handle on the side here, uh, which you, you can use to kind of pull the, uh, the scope in uh, or out. But uh, let's switch that back to auto. And uh, if we now zoom in a little bit on the scope, you can see that uh, you have uh, Earth visible below you, uh, you have some markings, and then you ha uh, have uh, various reflections uh, from the, uh, the reflective surface of the glass covering the periscope. So we can uh, control a lot of these things. Uh, but uh, if you're operating the periscope, uh, you would typically like to have an environment uh, which you don't get too much dis disturbance. So the first thing that you can do is to either, for example, uh, uh, switch off one of the lights. And you can see that you now have a reflection on one of the sides and then uh, it's dark on the other side. You can also try to switch this to red and see how you like to uh, operate it. Uh, or uh, you can uh, turn off the cabin light uh, fully, uh, which will make it much easier to see um, through the periscope. But uh, in some cases, there might be sunlight coming in. Uh, right now, I'm in an attitude where most of the sunlight uh, is blocked by the spacecraft. Uh, but um, if you have sunlight coming in through the window, that will illuminate the cockpit quite hard. So we'll take a look at that uh, pretty soon. So let's just go and switch to, uh, uh, let's turn on the light to both. And now I'm going to pitch up to a level attitude that's basically zero. So we're looking uh, into the horizon. And uh, now I'm going to kind of turn the spacecraft, spacecraft around. And if I now turn off the lights, you can see that once the sunlight starts to shine into the cabin, then um, it gets uh, really illuminated in here. Uh, and uh, this one brings out quite a lot of reflections in the scope at, uh, as well. So uh, to block that out, you can go and close the windows uh, completely. And this will basically make it uh, dark uh, inside of the cockpit with the exception of some reflection coming from the, the scope itself. So if I now turn on the filter, then you will see that uh, everything here is off and it's very dark inside the cockpit, even though we're uh, basically looking into the sun. So yeah, let's uh, configure a little bit back to uh, normal operations because I want to fully see some of the markings. So let's switch the uh, left hand light on to only and we'll keep it normal instead of the right red light. The red light is really good for nighttime operations. Uh, the same with the red uh, filter here. But the key thing about this uh, 
uh, Periscope here is that you can use this as a backup instrument. Let's say that, for example, your uh, gyros uh, are destroyed. So right now you can see my current attitude. I'm uh, basically in a retro grade in terms of pitch, but my yaw is completely uh, turned around to 180 degrees because I was looking into my direction of travel. And then let's reset the roll as well. So the first thing is, how do we get into a retrograde attitude? Let's pretend that this one doesn't work. We're not allowed to, to look at the attitude uh, for now. Uh, the first thing we'll notice is that since this periscope is looking down uh, from below the, the capsule, you can see the camera here, and uh, it's tilted about 14 and a half degree along the exterior of the craft. So if I now, uh, let's open the window, uh, look out the window, you can see that we're driving uh, or flying in the direction uh, of flight and we're looking into the velocity. So basically we're in a prograde attitude. And if you take a look at the scope, you can see a similar uh, pattern on the ground here. The ground kind of flies from the top here and goes slowly uh, backwards to the end of the scope. Uh, if you want to be in a retrograde direction, this needs to be inverted. The ground needs to travels, travel the opposite direction. Um, we want to kind of pretend that we're sitting in the backseat of the car and looking out the rear window. And if you get that same feeling in the spacecraft, you'll know that you're, you're in a retrograde attitude. So let's go ahead and uh, apply 180 degrees uh, yaw. And, and now I'm only going to do this using this periscope here. So let's see if we can um, get that working. And now um, let's uh, stop our rates. And uh, now I'm going to pitch down to try and center Earth uh, into the scope here. You can see that Earth isn't uh, centered. I'm looking directly down on it. So now I'm going to uh, continue maneuvering and then I'm going to, to flip the magnitude up. And if I'm now looking down at the ground track, you'll see that I have some drift here. So if we do something like this, uh, you can see that the ground track kind of follow these lines here, which means that we still have a, a, a good amount of drift left in our relative ground track. So I'm going to continue to yaw until I can get this drift uh, at zero. And uh, in order to follow the ground track on the markings, you can uh, take uh, something very specific, for example, this cloud here, and then see how it moves upwards along these lines. But now you can see that the ground track is actually now traveling from the bottom of the scope towards the top. This means that we're now in a retrograde attitude. But uh, how do we ensure that yaw is okay as well as roll? So uh, let's uh, zoom out again. Uh, we can see that I have um, the earth kind of centered in the side of the scope here. So let's try to uh, roll to, to get that centered. And then uh, using this method, you can go back and forth on, on correcting roll and yaw all the way until you're happy with the attitude. So let's, let's center Earth in the scope. You can see that it's now this big circle in the middle. Something like that. And I'm going to hit uh, magnitude again. And now if we see uh, the ground track here, it feels like I still have some yaw. So I can now go in and correct that. And then uh, we can use roll again to center earth. Uh, the other thing that you can do now is that uh, since we're looking directly down at earth here, you can see that uh, our uh, earth is kind of centered. 
So now we can go and close in the altitude lines here. And these ones can be used to help you centering the Earth when you're trying to figure out your attitude. So uh, let me bring those up and then uh, map them around Earth. Something like that. And uh, it's hard to get it 100% precise, but uh, let's try this. So now uh, my altitude is based on this scope, and this is just visual observations. 125 nautical miles of altitude. So let's check the altitude here. 125.2. Uh, and as you can see, this was actually very close. And uh, I usually don't get it this close. Uh, but um, uh, this is a great tool to both center Earth, so you know that it's centered in scope, and also figuring out your altitude based on how far in they move. So uh, now if we take a look at the ground track and we can try to follow it, it looks like things are going in the right direction, which means that we should now be in a level uh, or in optics orientation. So this is the optics orientation. It should be around 14 degrees. You can see that I was able to see out roll. I have some yaw, but it's uh, very small. And uh, I'm in optics attitude, which means Earth is centered in a scope. And this attitude means that this line uh, or the normal of the camera is pointing directly toward down towards the Earth uh, horizon um, or towards Earth. So it's a little bit hard to see with this camera because it's uh, relative to the craft. But you can see that this line here is kind of perpendicular to the, uh, the shape of Earth here. Uh, Level attitude, uh, that's when you get into zero uh, and it's the attitude that you have when you're looking into the horizon. So if we now use the markings on the windows like that, you can see the uh, zero here. This is the level. Uh, now we're at the horizon attitude, which means pitch is zero. And uh, the optics, if we're now going to be using the degrees on the window, is to align this line with the horizon. At this point, we are in the optics uh, attitude. And then finally, the retrograde marking is minus 34, like that. And now you can see that we are on a retrograde attitude. And uh, these are just indications, but uh, the periscope here comes with some other lines as well. So if you align Earth with the bottom uh, lines here. So let's do that, something like this. And uh, now this line uh, covers the horizon. And then uh, you take a look at the direction of the ground track below you. It's moving from the bottom towards the top. This means that now I'm in a retrograde attitude. So now I could fire my retrograde engines manually, for example, and know that the burn would be able to bring me home. If we take a look at the exterior view, you can see that the engines are now pointing uh, 34 degrees um, uh, pitch and uh, in the direction of my velocity, uh, which, me, which is the retrograde attitude of the uh, spacecraft. Uh, now we're moving into the ocean. And uh, one uh, important thing is that uh, when you're above the ocean, you don't have any landmarks to track uh, along these lines, but this uh, is a good excuse to use the clouds. So the clouds kind of works like a, a, a landmark and you can use these in the same way that we used the ground track earlier to figure out in what direction things are moving and also what kind of drift you have on the var various axes. Uh, another uh, key thing, uh, we touched briefly on it, is that you can see offset in roll uh, on uh, the, the shape of Earth and how it uh, looks in the scope. So you can zero out rolls by centering Earth. And the same applies for yaw. It, it's very similar to, to roll, but it looks a little bit different. But at the same time, um, if you're switching back and forth, just as I did earlier by centering Earth, and then uh, using magnitude to figure out the drift, then you can start to maneuver around on the 
uh, your and try to center your and roll in cycles just as we did earlier. Uh, the last thing that I want to cover is that we do have uh, the um, mission tools uh, and the equipment and uh, let's see the uh, navigation reticle and uh, you can use this one also uh, to align the horizon. Uh, this is good for ground track operations, trying to trace things, trying to keep something centered in the window then this is uh, great for doing that. Uh, if you want to uh, center, let's say, uh, this star here in the, um, the uh, navigation uh, reticle, you can see that my craft is, um, uh, or my attitude is relative to horizon. Uh, but you can then uh, use the um, cage. Uh, this is gyro norm, uh, which means that the gyros are now um, slaved to the horizon scanners. If you switch this to free, the attitude will now uh, uh, be decoupled from the horizon scanners and is now fixed relative to the stars. So um, let's take a look at our star here. And it has this attitude. So if I now uh, time scale a little bit and then uh, I pitch, oh yeah, the star goes down uh, on the horizon, of course. But uh, now I can pitch to say, for example, zero here, and I can center something uh, in this, uh, for example, this uh, line here of, from this star. I can go and say that, okay, I'm in free. Now I'm going to cage the gyros, and that will reset my attitude to the current orientation of the craft. And if I switch them back to free, uh, this is now fixed to the stars as well. So I can always get back to having uh, this star on this cross here by setting my attitude to zero um, at any time in the orbit. Uh, of course, the platform does uh, accumulate drift, especially with the horizon scanner mode. Uh, so um, I recommend uh, paying a good attention to your attitude. And then always taking some cross-references of what this attitude looks like on the panel here compared to outside the window and uh, through the scope uh, to figure out what your actual um, attitude is. So yeah, um, as always, uh, remember, make it dark if you're operating uh, in sunlight or if you want to close out exterior uh, external uh, disturbances. Cabin lights can be turned off, uh, which gives you uh, the ability to operate with uh, the scope in complete darkness. And uh, these lines are for retrograde attitude, and the Earth should be traveling from the, the bottom to the top in terms of ground track uh, to ensure that you are in the correct retrograde attitude. So with that, I uh, Thank you for watching and please leave a comment and uh, like this video, subscribe if you find this content useful and uh, please ask me questions. I'm happy to respond to you in the, the comments below. Thanks again.